Someone or him or whoever called the police, obviously. And the thing is, it was actually right by a school, too. <laughs> it's like you can't even make it up. You can't even make this up. It's like, are you even allowed near a school? No wonder you want to do homeschooling. I want my kids to live a good life, and I want to create a legacy for the rest of my my downline of, of my family. And so my downline? She's calling her family her downline. If you are a person who doesn't know how to just keep scrolling when you disagree with something, you have some kind of misery deep down inside of you and you literally just can't stand it. Something inside of me has caused chaos inside of you. This is so crazy. It's so crazy. Like, it's actually so crazy. I'd like to present my case today for what I believe is one of the worst people I've ever seen on the internet. And you can make the final judgment at the end of this video about whether or not you think this is a really, really bad person, okay? And I have a feeling you will side with me. So this initially came to my attention from TikTok, of course. One of her videos went viral and it was for all the wrong reasons. People were stitching it like crazy. A lot of people had a lot of things to say because it's just, it's honestly kind of wild that someone would think, okay, this is a good video for me to post. This is a person who does not like the public school system, okay? She thinks that the schools exist solely to like control your kids and she clearly doesn't respect teachers a whole lot. She thinks that she can do things better. She doesn't like teachers who hold the parents accountable and she's lashing out because of that and speaking her truth. So let's listen to that right now, shall we? If you have a child in public school, I would like to know what your opinion is on this because I don't think that I'm in the wrong here. Um, a lot of you guys, if you've been watching my past videos, you already know that I'm pulling my first grader out of school. I'm gonna let him finish out the school year and then we're gonna be doing unschool. If you wanna watch more about what that is, there's a video on my profile. Now listen, there's two things that I'm not. I am not a homework mom. I'm not doing that shit. He's with you for seven to eight hours a day. Get that shit in school. The time that he comes home, that's the time that we're spending together not doing homework, okay? All right, we're having some attitude problems already. Okay, so I'm not doing homework. Also, I'm pretty hard to get a hold of, and I don't think she likes that, um, but it, it's like really hard to get a hold of me. So if you need me, call me. I'll answer the phone. Don't be texting me over some app. That's just not my thing, okay? And so that's two things about me as a parent of a child who is currently in public school. Now, the other day, or a couple weeks ago, she sent home in his folder a piece of paper um, that had a signature side and a date side. And she told him, didn't say nothing to me, told him to tell me I needed to take his home. She probably did say something to you, but you just admitted in front of everyone that you're really hard to get a hold of and you refuse to respond to the teacher parent messaging app. So I don't really believe you that she didn't tell you that you had to do things. And plus there's things that you just need to find out because you talk to your kids, okay? Work out of his folder every single night, sign and date this piece of paper and send it back to her every single day. Now, listen, I took that piece of paper out and I said, I'm not doing that, baby. That does not, that has that no benefit to you at all. I don't have, to, I have four kids I, and I run a massive business through social media. I wonder what the massive social media business is that she's being intentionally vague about. I don't have time, literally. I, I put it on the counter, I haven't signed it. He said, no mommy, I'm not gonna get fuzzies if you don't sign it. I said, first of all, that's not gonna happen. You're not gonna be, get punished for something that I'm not doing, okay? And so I just like kind of shrugged it off and I was, was gonna end up messaging her, messaging her about it, but I never did, because I honestly didn't think that that was true. I was like, there's no way that she's gonna like punish him for something that I'm not doing, right? There's just no way, that's just not, that that's not logical to me. Why would you do that? Um, and so anyways, this morning he said, mommy, I only have one fuzzy um, and everybody else has five fuzzies who haven't signed my paper for my homework. I said, oh, really? Now, we've already had some other issues going on with my son, you know, of things that he's done being disruptive. We've met before. I've Oh, so your son is a notable problem in the class with the attitude of his parent. Why am I not surprised? You know, come to the conclusion that I know my son's not perfect, okay? He is probably the troublemaker. He's a class clown. I get it. Um, but now it's like he's being targeted, and I don't like that. And so he isn't getting fuzzies, and so I've already... He's being targeted now. All she had to do was sign it, and she intentionally went out of her way to not do that when she knew what would happen, and now say that he's being targeted. I called the principal, and I was like, I want him moved the rest of the year. If you don't move him to another class to finish out the rest of the year, I'm just gonna pull him now, and he's not coming back next year. So I'd like to know your opinions, not even really your opinions, but have you experienced having to do something like this, and why? 
Why do we need to sign that they're completing this homework and keeping the homework home? We're not even sending it back to be graded. It's just a, a way for you, like, no. No. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this, please. Oh boy, there's obviously so many things wrong with that video. <laughs> it's hard to really know where to start, but obviously her original video got a lot of people very fired up, very angry, and for good reason. So let's take a look at some of the responses that people made to this original video. Sign and date this piece of paper and send it back to her every single day. Now, listen. She spent more time making the video than it would have taken to sign the paper. As a matter of fact, if you were to add up all the seconds necessary to sign the paper for probably the rest of the school year, it would equal to less time spent making that video. I mean, how embarrassing. Honestly, like that was my first thought too. I went to public school. I had to do all of these things. Like we had to get our syllabus signed and you know, we had to get things signed all the time. And, and you know, as a kid, I felt like I really did learn something from that where I was like, okay, well, I have to get this done. There were certain things like the syllabus, for example, or certain worksheets that it was important for my parents to see and understand. And it's really crazy that she doesn't understand that and like is acting like this is a totally brand new topic and her son's being targeted when this has been happening forever that your parents have to sign things. I needed to take his homework out of his folder every single night, sign and date this piece of paper. <laughs> I mean, it really is that easy. Like, Why do we need to sign that they're completing this homework? Because a huge indicator of academic success is parental involvement and teachers and schools know that. So they set up these little routine things that are, I don't know, super easy for parents to do to encourage them to be involved in their academic mm -hmm. success. They're not asking you to volunteer here. They're not asking for your time. They're asking for you to take a piece of paper and sign your name, showing that you have witnessed what your child is working on. I had a parent like that once in my classroom. We had to have a come to terms moment. I taught kindergarten and this little child was listening to all the negative things that the parent was saying about me. And I had to tell the parent, your child is with me for 180 days. He is in kindergarten. This is setting the foundation of his academic success. I would never in a million years target a child's negative behavior or anything like that, especially if it was coming from her. I'm very professional and I told her that this isn't hurting me, this is going to hurt your child. And if the goal is for your child to achieve the academic success that you want and I want, then you need to cut this shit out. You can talk poorly about me to your husband in private, but speaking poorly about your child's teacher for public and other people to see is only going to hurt your child. The school to home connection is huge and you're ruining it. You wanted opinions and the why, that's the why. I think this is probably the most accurate video that we'll probably see in response to like, she's like, well, why do I have to do this? Like, seriously, what the heck, you know? Obviously she's got ulterior motives, like, you know, the main girl that we're talking about, but it's obviously used to gauge how involved your parent is in your child's academic life. I think if there's a student that is routinely not getting things signed by their parent, and it's obvious that the parent is not very involved or does not respect, the academic process, it's probably a very large indicator of, oh, here's why this kid's not doing very well. Here's why this kid is disruptive because this kid does not respect me. It's a respect thing as well. It's as simple as that, right? So. I am a big person that has always said, teachers cannot do a diagnosis. I hear teachers all the time, that child has ADHD. We don't, we can't do that. But maybe you should look into pathological demand avoidance. That maybe, that does not, that has that no benefit to you at all. I've been a teacher for 10 years and I've always said that parents are the hardest part of teaching. And this is why discipline is getting out of control as the years go by and this is why kids have no respect for us is because their parents are telling them at home that what we're doing in class doesn't matter and it has no benefit to them if the kids see that you're not respecting us they're not going to respect us at school either this stuff makes me so angry i love to see like these perspective from actual teachers because these teachers let's face it like no one wants to be a teacher anymore and why do you think that is because of people like this who are at home who think that they can do everything better and they have no respect for teachers. They think that teachers are stupid. They think that teachers are targeting just their child. They don't believe that their child has any capacity to be a problem because they are so self-involved and narcissistic that they think that, oh, my kid's perfect. Even though she said in her original video, like, 
well, I know my kid's not perfect, but he's probably the class clown and he's, but she like never really took accountability for that or like why he would be doing that. She never connected the dots, which is I think a huge problem, especially if you want to unschool your kid at home and take him out of a public school system where he is probably more likely to actually learn those things because she's obviously not clocking it. Paper out opinion is on this because I don't think that I'm in the wrong here. Oop. That video is a reminder to all teachers that behaviors are learned, that mindsets are taught. Next time you wonder why that student acts the way they do, think about the people at home shaping their minds yep. over their kid. And you're mad that you don't have full control over our kid. Ma'am, I don't know. I, I, I can't speak for all teachers, but um, as a public educator, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that um, I don't want control over your kids. I, I don't. I just want them to do the assignments I give them. And I just want them to be excited to learn every day. Um, but you have parents like yourself who uh, teach kids that teachers don't matter and you don't have to respect teachers and you are inherently teaching them that they don't have to respect authority. I think the problem with this is every, everything that she's saying is right, everything else that everyone else is saying is right. And like all the responses I totally 100% agree with. But I think the problem is, is that there's an ulterior motive here from this particular parent and she's not going to listen to anyone with any dissenting opinions because she's already made her mind up. Let's just get that straight right away, okay? So anything that anyone says in one ear, out the other, if it's even going in her ears, I don't think she's watching any of these response videos and I think that's what the problem is as well is she's decided that public schools are evil and like I said, there's a reason behind it. We'll get into that. In your original video, you stated that you were taking uh, your son out of school and you've just said in that caption of that video that your son doesn't want to go to school. Um, so, I mean, does your son not want to go to school because of the teacher or does your son not want to go to school because you've taught him to hate his teacher and hate his school? The second one, yeah. We desperately need teachers. But um, the reason why teachers are leaving education and the reason why teachers hate their jobs is not because of the kids. It's because of parents like you who have taught their kids that they don't have to respect what the teacher says and what the teacher does. You are the reason why our education system is failing. Well, I'm going to let him finish out the school year and then we're going to be doing unschool. If you don't want to listen to all that yapping, basically she's mad at her son's teacher for making her do her job as a mother and check on her son's education and so to retaliate against the teacher she is ruining her son's education for the rest of his life by doing unschooling which if you don't know is just like chronically online mom lingo for child neglect basically child neglect I went to summer camp with a lot of like super evangelical kids who like weren't allowed to read Harry Potter and stuff at home, you know, and so because their parents were afraid of the public education system, they did homeschooling, which is basically unschooling because they didn't actually homeschool them. They just kind of put them in front of a bunch of books and said, do whatever you want. Spoiler alert, none of these kids can read now as like 20 something year old. Take your kids to school or I will eat lava. We're gonna get into more of what unschooling means in a little bit here. I know you're probably like, what is that? I had never heard that term before until I started watching these videos and it definitely seems very problematic to me personally. Uh, based on what these people are saying. But don't worry, we'll hear from her in a second. But yeah, I just wanted to show this because, you know, there's a lot of problems with people that seem to be adopting this unschooling practice. I think this is one of the major ones. Birds of a feather flock together. Listen to this. Apparently my address has been leaked and people are threatening to call CPS on me for doing unschooling with my children and not having a GED or a high school diploma. You can't make it up. Okay, so you know what? It all makes sense right now because someone who does not even have a GED and no high school diploma, big surprise that that person does not value the education system, okay? Someone who didn't finish it themselves, which first of all, I can't think of a worse candidate for unschooling or you know schooling your own children when you don't even have a proper education yourself. So how would you know what that looks like? And don't worry, we're gonna see why she thinks that she's qualified to do this besides just obvious, like absolute 
100% narcissism. But yeah, it's true, people. No GED, no high school diploma. So um, here's my thoughts on this process. If you spent the time that you're spending on me and you took it and you spent it on your own life, put the energy effort into your own life, I can promise you would probably find happiness because you seem very resourceful. Whoever these people are that are digging for my address, posting it on the internet, and then taking time out of their day to call CPS on me for something as simple as choosing to school my child in the way that I want to school them. You know what else is really simple and easy and took less time than making a video? Signing your kid's homework. Yeah, signing your kid's paper, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna stop talking about it on social media. I know it might piss you off if you're a teacher or if you're a principal or if you are somebody who makes money based on uh, my child coming to public school or I really I don't even know. What's the motive here? I can tell you what her motive is. Coming up in a second. <laughs> Why on earth is somebody going to search for my address, post it on social media, and then call CPS on me for something as simple as me wanting and speaking out on unschooling my child? Do I really trigger you that bad? Do I make you that mad? Or like I said, is there a different like agenda? So um, anyways, it's just crazy to me that people are out here doing that and I'm just not I'm not gonna stop talking about it so, so if you're wanting me to like take my videos down or to stop talking about it or sharing it I'm not going to you know by the way I just want to make it very clear that in case she goes on to like apologize or anything like that foreshadowing she believes that anyone who works in the public school system she believes that teachers are financially motivated to keep her kids in school and to control her kids so that's a fundamental belief of hers that she seems very attached to Okay, I think she has a deep dislike of teachers, so I just wanna make that very clear. That's the vibe I'm getting. Let's just keep that in mind in case she like tries to backtrack or anything like that. Furthermore, unschooling or homeschooling is not illegal anywhere. There's just certain requirements that you probably have to have, but as far as unschooling goes where I am, I don't have to check boxes, and that's the whole fucking reason that I'm doing it. It is not illegal, and my children are not gonna be taken away from me because I choose to unschool. She wants to do unschooling because you don't have to check any boxes, unlike homeschooling, because she's trying to get around actually having to go through the proper practices of, my kid is at the right reading level. Oh yeah, my kid can do algebra. Yeah, my kid can do standardized testing. I think she's very worried about that. That's my personal opinion. Okay, and she wants to get around that because who in the right mind would let somebody with no GED, no diploma, teach their own kids at home? What in the f I just got a message from my son's teacher. He's in first grade, he's seven years old. And I got a message from her stating that if he misses 10 consecutive days, then he will be automatically withdrawn from the school. I have never heard this in my life. Furthermore- oh, Hold on a minute. How disconnected are you from what is going on in schools? Everybody knows this. You cannot be truant. You cannot miss that much school without telling people why your kid is not there. People are involved and wanna know that kids are safe okay especially by the way teachers who care about your kid despite you at home telling them that they suck that they shouldn't be trusted and they shouldn't be respected there was a cop who had showed up to my bonus baby's grandparents house because they missed school um for like three or four days out of the week or whatever we had just gotten over the flu okay so my family of we have six people eric is the only one who didn't get it so we all had the flu i'm not sending them to school when they have the flu flu duh do you want me to get other kids sick i didn't think so so we didn't send them to school and they didn't go to school for i mean the flu lasts for a week okay so my bonus babies went back to their moms and they i'm pretty sure went back to school and then as soon as the flu ended in my seven-year-old he immediately contracted pink eye and then my toddler got it so i already knew how highly contagious that it was and so I messaged his teacher and I was like, well, what uh, do I need to do? Is there anything special I need to do? Because he had the flu and now he has pink eye. I don't want to send him to school because number one, he feels like number one, his eye is crusty, dusty clothes. Um, and so what do I need? She's like, just fill out the form on the website, whatever. I was like, okay, cool. And then she just randomly messages me that. So you're going to withdraw my kid if I don't have him there every single, like, I don't know. Y'all can share, like, what's the logic behind that? Because I'm just not understanding it. This is someone who is so grossly uninformed about what the hell is going on in schools. Like, honestly, it's it's actually to the point where I go, okay, wait, this is scary. No, this is actually scary that as a parent, you don't know these things, okay? That every day you need to be calling in saying, yes, he still has the flu. Yes, I am with him 
he still has the flu. You have to call in every day. You, go, you don't just fill it out one time and then don't send him to school for 10 days. That's crazy. It makes me sad for these kids that a parent could be this dense. Sorry. But for me, I have such this deep rooted feeling of like how much the system wants to control our children. They, they, they act like they own our kids. And I don't know if you guys know this, but look into why the schooling system was ever even created in the first place. It was not to educate our children. This is insane levels of paranoia. You're seeing things, you're hearing things like very obvious why any child would have to go reported, okay? And if you can't understand that there's other kids that if they are not reported by the school that no one will check on them, you know why kids go to school and they get free lunches is because there's no other way that they will eat. These are the reasons why kids need to be accounted for. Like you're crazy. You're actually insane. Like, I'm sorry, it, it actually pisses me off bad. It wasn't to teach them the life skills that they need because we all know that you don't learn life skills in school. You learn how to sit down, pay attention, and do what you're told. And unfortunately, everybody that has kids in public school, they have to go to work and they can't afford to put them in, in something that's like private school or something that's actually teaching them their children like proper life skills. Once again, no GED, no diploma. Maybe finish high school before you start talking about how school's not effective. Most people go to public school and most people learn life skills and learn how to do things, okay? It's actually crazy. Like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. No, actually, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm not kidding. So they have to rely on the public school system and it's broken. So if you have any advice for me, I would love to homeschool him. I'm just a little worried then I might f his academics and I don't want to make him stupid. I think it's objectively stupid to be asking strangers on TikTok of all places for advice on how to homeschool your kid. Let's start there. Because I was homeschooled and I did not get the proper education that I needed. But I did learn a lot of life skills that taught me a lot that have made me make a lot of money now in my life, which is great, right? Um, but if you have any advice, please let me know. And then tell me in the comments, where are you, where do you guys live? And is this something that is normalized where you live with your kids? Okay, it's all adding up. Yeah, okay. But at the same time, it's not. So you were homeschooled, it didn't work for you, you were behind, admittedly, but you now wanna homeschool your kids. How do people like this exist? I mean, by the way, she thinks because she makes money now, and we'll find out why in a moment, how she's doing that, she thinks because she's learned how to do that, that she now is the authority on how to live life. Does the schooling system also own your kids? Please help me make some sense of this situation. Furthermore, the reason that they ask for doctor's notes and the only reason that doctor's notes excuse the absence is because they don't believe you when you say that your kid is sick. Why the f do I want to keep my kid home? Like, no, thank you. I would love for him to be gone at school for a couple hours. Give me a mother break. So you want a break and you want your kid to be at school rather than at your house, but now you want to homeschool your kid. The contradictions, like they are, I, I can't even follow this really. Like it's all over the place. Like this person's so lost. I just can't even believe it. But like he is sick and it's not my problem if you don't believe that. Why the f do I need a doctor's note for you to believe that my kid is home? If he's really sick, then you should have no problem getting a doctor's note. Right? <laughs> I'm sick f off. Here's some comments. Those life skills should be taught by parents, but sadly they aren't and we teachers get blamed for it. Yeah, when people complain about like, high school doesn't teach my kid how to do anything. They don't teach them how to do taxes. They don't teach them how to do, you know, be good with money. They don't, it's like school doesn't have to teach your kids these things, like how to cook. Like these are things that you need to teach. Like do, do parents understand that? I really think that's one of the biggest problems today is parents think that their job is done. Like they send their kids to school and the school should teach them everything. No, you have to teach them when they get home from school. You keep teaching them, like you never stop teaching them. Here's another comment. As a teacher, if a child is out for one day, I worry. Imagine how worried a teacher would be after 10. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and this is, by the way, coming from someone who cares about students. Okay, even though you're calling them, you know, financially motivated 
criminals, basically. Um, it's the law in Oregon, 10 consecutive days unenrolled. What's even more wild is trying to catch kids up who are chronically absent. Yeah, can you imagine? 10 consecutive days without a doctor's note is an automatic drop in Tennessee. She's acting like she, her kids are being, once again, targeted. Please homeschool, I can already tell you're a delight. Can you miss work for 10 consecutive days without being terminated? Great point. Okay, 10 consecutive days is crazy. That's two school weeks without a doctor's note. It's an automatic drop, Central Florida. Exactly. Let's listen to what unschooling means to her, right? Let's, let's listen to that. Remember the video that I made about my first grader being threatened to being expelled if he missed too many days? Like, the school system, you can only miss so many days, and then they, like, call DSS on you or some shit. It's crazy so through this experience and also since I've had him in school I've had a very weird icky like my intuition my motherly instincts are screaming at me that the schooling system is not for my kids okay so like I've not wanted to put him in there but let's just face it it's a free babysitter and you know we got free babysitter okay so someone who believes that school is a free babysitter which is an absolutely wild horrific thing to say by the way on the internet to say that public school is your free babysitter. That sentence right there says a million different things and mostly it says you have no respect for this public school system. You have no respect for teachers. If you really have whittled it down to this is just a free babysitter and that's it and they're just going over there and just sitting and doing absolutely nothing, you know what, yeah, take them out of school. If you truly believe that, take them out of school and give the other teachers a break from people like you do we're trying to create a financial stable life for these kids because we didn't have that but anyways so I have decided I'm, I'm pretty sure I've made the the final decision that I'm going to be doing unschooling now a lot of people have a lot of to say about this right there is public school there's online public school there's homeschool and then there's on, uh, un, unschool it's kind of hard to say so it's not hard to say so public school, you go into a brick and mortar building, right? Um, online public school, you have to still show up to, to school uh, or show up to these classes, but it's online. And then homeschool is you're still using the schooling curriculum to teach your child and you still have to turn in paperwork to the government and you still have to have, uh, you have to check some boxes. You still have to check boxes, which is what I don't want to do. I, I don't want to check boxes about my life and my child for the government why why are we so in this mindset that we have to do this you know what i mean like the government won't let me what the f what the f okay so anyways unschooling i have to say i hate when people say anyways it's there's no s i hate that i'm sorry i know i'm not gonna be like the grammar police i'm really not i could have been doing that for a while now i can't it's like nails on a chalkboard when i hear people say anyways it's just not right you're not supposed to say it it's anyway 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 is where I'm still learning, I'm still researching, but it's basically where you don't have to check a box. You teach your kid what you want them to learn, and a lot of the times you leave it up to them of what they want to learn. And there is studies that show kids who do unschooling and even homeschooling are actually faster learners, and I want to say smarter, than public school kids. I'm pretty sure there's studies out there, okay? Now You're pretty sure? You don't even know if there's studies? You're pretty sure? Now, this is not me talking shit to anybody, this, anybody's decisions, okay? But I'm you are. pretty much to that point of I've decided when he's done with this schooling year, I'm going to be doing unschooling. We're going to be doing like gardening and baking, cooking and cleaning and life skills. And I'm going to teach him about fucking taxes. I'm going to teach him about money. Like, I'm not raising a child that's dependent on the fucking government. I refuse. Once again, I have to say, these are all things that you should be doing anyway. You should be teaching your kids to cook. You should be teaching your kids to clean. You should be teaching your kids, if you want to, to garden. You're kidding me, right? Like, you're actually kidding me, right? And a lot of kids, believe it or not, are getting public school education, because I know that this happened with for me, and I was one of four kids and for some reason, my parents still found the time to teach me all these things, okay? And I got public school education. You're just wrong about these things. I'm very concerned for her kids that all she wants to do with them is teach them about money, which once again, it's coming, don't worry. And I know you know where this is headed. <laughs> Probably have a good idea of what kind of business she's in, okay? If there's no curriculum for these kids, I am very concerned for them. I really am. What happens when they need to know algebra or calculus? You think she's gonna be able to teach them that? Fuse. 
my life has been hard. I don't really, I, I mean, what, I'm 30 now. So if I live until I'm like 80, hopefully maybe 100, I don't know. But the point to this is I want my kids to live a good life and I want to create a legacy for the rest of my my downline of, of my family. And so my downline? She's calling her family her downline. Freudian slippage. So, um... It's going to be a really good experience, and I hope that you guys are following along because I'm going to show y'all everything. So let me know what are your thoughts, opinions, or advice when it comes to unschooling. You just got to keep living, man. It says, if the worst thing that happens to my kids from unschooling is not knowing how to socialize with random people, I think they will be fine. I never leave my house. I don't like people either, and I'm doing pretty great in life. Shrugging emoji. Go back and look at that text that she wrote. What is the most common word throughout that text? I. I. I don't like other people. I never leave my house. I think they'll be fine. I'm doing great. When are you going to take into consideration what your kid thinks or what your kid wants or what what's best for your kid? But that's the one thing that I've been trying to figure out from the be very beginning is why are you still sticking around and talking about this dumb unschooling bull? You're trying to make this like a trend of people pulling their kids out of school. And it's just that I wanted to say it's a clout thing, but I feel like more than that, it's a pride thing. It's you, you want people to see you as some kind of like hero against the schools. You want people to look at you and be like, yeah, I can be a bad parent and be praised for it. Because at the end of the day, it's about you. How to unschool correctly. Most people in my comments are actually homeschooling or unschooling. People in my comments actually are homeschooling or unschooling. And I love that. We built this community of people, this community of like women that really just think the same. And I love that like that's been my goal this entire time with this platform is can we create a community of people that all think the same and we've done that so tell me yeah starting to build my case right now she is admitting right here that she wants to create a community of people that all think the same okay what happens when you have a big community of people that all think the same well they're probably easier to convince to do certain things okay easier to control easier to pitch products to in the comments if you homeschool or unschool what are your best practices your best tips okay so a couple of things that i'm going to be doing are prioritizing to make sure that i don't fuck up his education and he learns the skills he needs to be a successful adult is lots of time outside this is going to allow his creativity to flow letting children be children and not setting them in front of a desk or a piece of paper or a book for eight hours a day is the best way to get their creativity flowing and that matters in life especially when you're trying to do something that you love i'm going to take him grocery shopping we're going to start a garden doing lots of gardening lots of hands-on stuff to teach him these things not just reading out of a fucking book which is what's wrong with public school so am i repeating myself I'm supposed to do all these things when he gets home on the weekends like these are all things that you're supposed to be doing anyway. I think that it's actually wild and embarrassing for you that you're admitting that maybe you weren't doing these things before. Like you're waiting until he's out of school, unschooled, to start doing these things with him. Because you obviously haven't done those things yet. I'm going to teach him how to do a garden. I'm going to teach him about X, Y. Why haven't you done it already? Why haven't you done it? Do it. Then do it. He's seven years old. Do it. What are you waiting for? Oh, I'm going to also teach him about money. That goes into grocery shopping, okay? I'm going to teach him how to be frugal, teach him how to shop for the things that he needs, not always what he wants. I'm going to teach him how to set boundaries with people. I'm going to teach him how to create friendships and connections with people. I'm going to teach him how to bake and cook. Do you know how many adults there are right now that 30, 40 years old don't know how to fucking cook, which is crazy to me okay after a certain point you can't blame your parents for that no more you can learn all right uh we're also gonna be doing lots of sports so he'll be in any sport to every sport that we can possibly think of because we will now have time to do so I'll i went to all these things and i was in public school i played a million sports and i was in public school and i learned how to do all this stuff while i was in public school and i'm willing to bet by the way a lot of people watching this video did as well so you look like a freaking idiot right now i'm taking them to the aquarium and zoos and learning through life i went to these things by the way on school field trips as well <laughs> like life experiences and that is what unschooling is now a lot of people think that unschooling and people will say unschooling is giving your child autonomy over what they want to learn 
And yes, <clears throat> that is true. But if you sit there and say, what do you want to learn today? And your kid goes, I don't really want to learn today. You're, it's not your job to say, okay, that's fine. No, we're learning something today, but what do you want to learn first? Okay, that, that's how I'm approaching it. I'm not going to give my child full autonomy over dictating his entire education or his entire like little baby life because if he chose he would choose to do nothing okay um but i will have lots of stuff planned out for us to do physically hands-on stuff and i believe this is going to be the best thing i've probably ever done for my kids and i'm really excited i'm gonna record everything so if you're not following me you definitely should be because i am documenting the out of this experience because um i have been feeling in my heart for a very long time that public school is just not it's just not it. It's just not. And I and I think that a lot of you watching this, you probably feel the same way. So I'll take the lead. I'll do this. I'll, I will lead you on this. Even though I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, I know that I'm going to I'm gonna figure it out. And I trust my instincts and, and what I feel is best for my child over anything else that the government or society has to say about it. So make sure you tap that follow button and follow me if you relate to this. We have 52 days until I pull my child out of public school and start unschooling him. He will be in... Y'all, please don't listen to this woman. She doesn't know what the heck she's talking about. And it sounds like she's gearing up as a social media influencer to use her kid to create content around unschooling. She is here giving advice on unschooling when she has never done it. She clearly doesn't know what unschooling is. And from what I have seen of her platform, she's not interested in engaging in the kind of parenting that unschooling requires. My kids are 21, 19, 15, and 13, and they have been unschooled their entire lives. My three eldest are now in college. Unschooling is an educational philosophy where you, as a parent, facilitate your child's learning and the development of them as an independent and lifelong learner. Unschooling looks different for every child and every family, so when this creator talks about wanting to build a community where everybody looks and thinks the same, big red flag. I hope I'm wrong here, but from what I've seen, it really feels like she is leveraging unschooling and her child in order to create content and revenue. This next video is actually insane. Watch this. People like this that make parents terrified to homeschool or unschool because in society, we've created this um, fear mongering culture of you don't own your own child. You don't get to say what you do with your child. You take them out of school, it's called truancy. Or they don't go to school, it's called truancy. You take them out of school, you homeschool, oh, you're their education and it's called negligence. It's wild to me that there are people on the internet threatening to call CPS on me, which Okay, um, because I choose to unschool my children or I'm voicing the fact that I am unschooling my children or even just that I'm not doing homework. Let's just say that I am a horrible mother. Okay, yeah, you know what? Let's say that actually. That I don't like teachers, I hate the public. Yeah, you know what? Let's say that too. You don't like teachers and you don't like the public school system. Public school system, I don't take care of my kids. I oh my God, this is awesome. We're on the same page. And yeah, you do make TikToks all day long. Let's say all of this. Like all I do is make TikToks all day long. Why do you give a f you You know why you give a f so much? Most people that are commenting hate, it doesn't matter if it's on my videos or somebody else's. If you are a person who doesn't know how to just keep scrolling when you disagree with something, you have some kind of misery deep down inside of you and you literally just can't stand it. Something inside of me has caused chaos inside of you. And I don't, there's no way that you can change my opinion on that. And so why do you give a f what I'm doing with my children? The reason that I'm showing up on social media, being so loud about my thoughts and my opinions is because I have the balls to do so. Because I am tired of seeing parents not feeling like they have control over their children's lives. Like they don't have a say so. You don't go to school, you get called truancy on you. That's something that you don't do, your children are getting punished for it. This is so crazy. It's so crazy, like it's actually so crazy. And it doesn't matter what I say in any of these videos, y'all are gonna come for me, you're gonna pick apart what I say, you're gonna stitch my videos. And that's fine, baby. Yes. Keep on commenting. If you want to call CPS on me, call CPS on me. I promise you that they're going to show up to my house. You're going to be like, oh, okay. Well, it's just a bunch of, bunch of internet trolls. For what reason? My children are well taken care of. And the fact that I'm pulling them out of school, I feel like school is more detrimental to, to them than anything. And that's the people that I'm trying to speak to. When you feel it in your soul as a human being, as a mother, that your child being in public school is not the best thing for them, I'm going to be the person that people look to that is going to lead them in the right direction. I'm not sitting here saying that I am some expert. It's the blind leading the blind. Yikes.
But I do know that my instincts, being a mother to my children, count for something. For the comments, okay, like number one, how does it feel to be one out of thousands of people saying the same thing? Do you feel seen? Do you feel heard? Does it make you feel good to be a bully? I love when people who are objectively nasty, rude, disrespectful people like to say, you're a bully. No, you're getting criticized for a good reason, okay? Let's not discount it in any way. Lord. Because when you're saying the same thing that thousands of other people have said, oh, you have time to make a video, but you don't have time to sign a piece of paper, how dumb you must be. Somebody already said that. Thousands of people already said that. And you're going to come in and you're going to say it again. And the fact is, I make... I post one video a day and I have like almost a thousand drafts. That means like over the course of the past five years, I've made drafts, I've talked about things. And so realistically, it takes a, a couple of seconds to get and post it, okay? If I'm making a video, it takes two minutes. There's 24 hours in a day. And the fact that I said I don't have time to sign that piece of paperwork, I don't have time to do something that is insignificant to my child's life insignificant. I would rather spend time with him. I'd rather go outside and play ball with him. I would rather create financial stability through posting content, which pisses y'all off, to give them a better life, a life that I did not have. And I'm mm. sorry that that makes y'all mad. I'm sorry that it makes you angry. If you're a grown human and you're commenting something on my post and it's negative, I promise you, you are no better than what you think that I am. You think that I'm this horrible person. I'm this horrible mother. And the facts are, are you any better because you're dropping a hate comment? Yes. In, in my comment yes. section. And you're just running up that check for me. So you can keep doing it if you want to. That's fine. But I'm just here to say that, like, why do you care? Why do you give a f And if you want to call CPS, please do it. Threatening people and saying, well, go ahead and call CPS on me. Yeah, that's kind of a new one, I think. I think it's like a new brand of f***ed up. Egging people on to call Child Protective Services on you, you're disgusting. So by the way, this was after she posted the original video, okay? And here is the response. It says, the facts about my OG video is, I don't believe homework is beneficial for my seven-year-old. Most people hate me because I'm able to use social media to generate a living for my family. Hey, I can help you do it too. Just let me know, sis. And now we arrive at what's really going on. What a lot of these people that are responding to that original video probably don't know or realize is that this is all part of a bigger scheme, okay? A literal scheme, a pyramid scheme. This is all part of her big MLM pitch, okay? So she's trying to intentionally create a community of unschooled, homeschooled mothers, okay, who are doing the same thing, feel the same way, and are disgruntled, okay, who hate teachers, they, they have no respect for public schools or public school systems, okay, and they are at home and they're probably not making a lot of money, they probably want to contribute while they're at home schooling their kids, and what better way to do that, in her opinion, than by selling multi-level marketing products, okay, and becoming a multi-level marketer. That is why all this is happening, okay? When someone is financially motivated to do something, that is usually the reason and the motivation behind why they're doing it, okay? So yes, she is all these things. She is disrespectful towards schools. She's an extreme narcissist. She's got a ton of pride, you know, all these things. You know, she wants content and stuff for her social media, but the main thing, in my opinion, which I think a lot of people just, are not realizing until now because you have to go down the rabbit hole to figure it out because she's intentionally vague about it on TikTok because you're not really supposed to post about this stuff on TikTok. You cannot promote multi-level marketing products on TikTok. I don't know if people knew that. So that is why they're always like, go to my link in my bio, but I can't say what I'm selling, blah, blah, and they'll hide things. So that is why. So this is the whole reason why she's doing this, which is just absolutely crazy because it's like, not only are you saying horrible things about teachers and the public school system and saying that your kids are going to be smarter than them and you're, you know, you know better and blah, blah, X, Y, Z, and just being all kinds of offensive, but it's also because you are in a pyramid scheme and she's not just in a pyramid scheme. Okay. She's at the top of her pyramid scheme. So she works for the MLM called prove it. Yeah, here's her on a private plane. She's allegedly number three in the company. Somebody commented, what's the massive social media business you run? Somebody commented, prob this TikTok. And then somebody else commented, pyramid scheme, LMAO. Because she doesn't say what it is. A lot of people don't know that she's working for a pyramid scheme. So I'm actually in the business of attraction marketing. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but social media is like on the rise. And it has been for a while. And you're holding it in your hand every single day. So why are you not using it to your advantage? I've been doing this for three Attraction marketing. Just call it what it is. Scammer.
three and a half years. I'm a verified six figure earner and I started with nothing, no followers, no experience, no knowledge of what to do at all. Now I've always been a hustler. So like, yeah, I didn't really have the money up front, but I made it happen. And if you think you can become a millionaire without putting out any money, you are wildly crazy. But I work with one company that pays me really well. It has a really amazing supplement that I do. It's very natural. It helped me lose 55 pounds and it keeps my energy levels up. It also curves my appetite really well. But I build everything through social media. I don't send cold messages. I don't knock on doors. I attract my tribe of people to me based on who I am as a person. She attracts them based on these wild viral videos that she puts out where she's saying things that like rope in these sort of like fringe mothers and like work from home mothers and moms that want to make a little bit of extra income because they're busy homeschooling their kids. Like she is doing this all very intentionally. She is crafting this group of people. Whereas we used to see a lot of people sending out the cold messages like on Instagram and just like doing a shot in the dark kind of thing, like hey, doing the hey hun and hey girly things. She is now going to TikTok, doing these crazy inflammatory videos and finding people that way. And I hate to say it, but it is actually working because people do not know what is happening right in front of them. And I share what I'm doing. And if you have a problem with that, please do not comment on this video. I don't need your negative opinion. Three videos and still no mention of the product or company, dot, dot, dot. And she replied, because that's trashy, connect with me. I'm interested. I texted blah, blah, blah. So stupid. Okay. So I have a question for anybody who drinks coffee on a regular basis or energy drinks on a regular basis. Number one, tell me your favorite energy drink in the comments. Number two, if you could get really good, clean energy, boost your mood, mental clarity, curb your appetite by replacing your coffee and energy drinks with something that is really good for you. Get how she's holding that. I just want you to really pay attention because you, I feel like people need to understand the signs of when someone is being like, you know, sketchy and clearly selling a pyramid scheme because it's really like, it's like I said, it's really not allowed on TikTok. So that's why she's being like hiding it. She's not saying the name of the company. She's not promoting it like actively and openly. She has to kind of go around it because she will get removed and banned. And I think you should still report it probably, but she's doing things like this. So it's like, she knows that people's kids are in public school. She knows a lot of people drink Celsius. She knows a lot of people would drink Starbucks. She's trying to like reel people in by saying, well, this is better than those things. Not only trying to provide an alternative product to like these very popular products, but she's also trying to provide an alternative lifestyle to your current lifestyle so you are primed and ready to go for this multi-level marketing scheme. Basically, Prove It is this crazy pyramid scheme where they basically, it's like snake oil, and it's all about selling like these liquid ketones and like drinking ketones and it's like, you know, powders and drink things and stuff like that. And it, they say that it's like, will help you go into ketosis, which is like to help you lose weight and promotes like you losing weight and stuff like that. But the truth is, is that it doesn't matter if you drink ketones because it's not the same as when your body is actually in ketosis. It's all like placebo fake stuff. Like it genuinely, it really is. It's not regulated by the FDA. I'm pretty sure they use proprietary blends and ingredients and things like that. It's like actually one of the biggest scams I've ever seen in my life. Like for real, like there's a lot of like pyramid schemes and things like that, but these products are genuinely like who the hell is actually buying this? Because it's obvious that these things don't work. It's basically just like energy drinks. They try to make it seem like, oh, these are so much better than actual energy drinks, but it's the same ingredients, like except these have ketones in them. They don't actually work. Okay, just please, so everybody knows, they don't, they do not actually work that has really great benefits would you do that put a yes in the comments if you would i know a lot of people have been asking me and they're searching for and i see videos all the time searching for a good clean way to boost their energy look how she's holding more it. on the natural side where they are able to have you know, uh, boosting their mood and curb their appetite and not necessarily have to drink coffee or energy drinks because y'all don't even know what in those things okay but what's ironic is that you don't know what is in these either because it doesn't have like the actual amount listed <laughs> like oh so you silly could. would you do that just drop a yes let me know look at how she's drinking that because she can't show the label when i tell you i've been running all day since i woke up like i went to sleep at 2 2, 2 a.m last night woke up got seven hours of sleep woke up at eight or nine whatever I had to do my hair and curl it. Went live on TikTok this morning, which was good. Sold two trials. Came to the event. Was in the COC. Now in the main event. They're dropping some bomb fire stuff. If you've ever, ever 
bought ketones for me before. She said boughten. This is someone who's gonna be homeschooling. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, unschooling their kid. If you've ever boughten something from or you are somebody who watches me and you don't want to be a part of a community-based marketing company or a part of a company at all, but you want to make a little bit of extra money. I'm talking like two, three, four hundred dollars a week just by sharing a link. Stay tuned, baby. But anyways, I'm going back in here. Anyway. Just a little M-I-M, M-I-A today. M-L-M, you mean? Okay, and that's fine. But um, I will talk to you guys when I talk to you guys. I'm probably gonna go live on um, Facebook when I'm done with this. It ends in a couple hours. Okay, yeah, so let's talk about if you're really gonna be making $400 a week. Okay, let's take a look at this income disclosure statement. This is from Prove It's website. Yikes. As you know, 99% of people never make their money back. In fact, they actually lose money in pyramid schemes. You've heard me say this before, guys. We're back. We're doing anti-MLM content in 2024, it's good to be back, right? <laughs> it's good to be back. Yeah, let's take a look at this. So this is scary. In 2022, first of all, you have to pay $49. Let's not forget, you have to pay $49 to be a part of this MLM, okay? This is the annual promoter fee, plus you're buying all these products. So like, keep that in mind, $49 for the promoter fee, and then you also have to buy products. You have to, because you have to be able to promote something, right? So the average annual income from promoter in 2022 was $2,392, which is very, very low. That's the average annual income, okay? But I think it's more important to look at the median annual income because that's a better indicator of like what someone who was joining right now would be making. Median annual income for all promoters in 2022 was $10.59. $10. That might be one of the worst statistics I have ever heard, okay? $10. That is really, really, really not good. That is abysmal and embarrassing. And here we have this person saying, you, you can make $400 a week. Girl, you're not even making $4 a week. Most of these people, as they always do, have lost money because they're making $10 but they had to spend at least $49. It's so embarrassing, it's so bad. And this is what this person is hawking to people. So like I said, and like I was mentioning, this is all part of a bigger scheme, literally and figuratively. So here's one, it won't be easy finding 1 million moms to teach how to bring their babies home from public school, heal their trauma, get healthy, and make money while doing it, but it'll be worth it. Couple things that I wanted to mention, by the way, this is a creator who almost has a million on TikTok, okay? and has almost 100,000 over on Instagram. So she has a very big platform, which is just crazy, and obviously why she like keeps roping people in. One thing that I wanted to mention earlier that I'm gonna mention now is, you know, she said in her video, like, I don't have time to sign this piece of paper. Like, I'm very hard to get a hold of. I'm always doing stuff, I'm busy working, I have things to do, you know, bubble X, Y, Z, right? But isn't like the whole idea, that the whole lifestyle that these people pitch is that you've got all this freedom, right? And obviously that's what she's trying to pitch here, but she's contradicting herself by saying, well, I'm, I can't sign my kid's homework. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to sign a piece of paper. But at the same time, she's trying to say, well, you're gonna have enough time to actually homeschool your kid if you are part of my MLM pyramid scheme. So it's like, once again, the contradictions are so wild and so out of control. From someone who was homeschooled and never got a regular education, I'll tell you this. I've learned more from experience and community than I ever learned from a piece of paper. I also learned a lot faster. I now make a full-time income from my phone and it's 100% built from my skills. Now I'll teach these skills to my kids, unschooling them. Your life is what you make it, not what society says you must do. Come do this with me. It's just crazy. I mean, no, gee, you need no high school diploma, but she says that she learned faster. I want to talk about how I'm actually able to unschool or homeschool my kids. Because a lot of you guys are actually stay-at-home moms, and you like getting the break from your kids and sending them to school. Trust me, I get it. I am the same way. I'm like, please take this kid. Am I really excited about doing unschooling and having both of my kids full-time all day, every day? Um, you know, I, I can't really say yes. What is the truth? This is my ultimate point right here when you don't even know yourself 
why you're saying the things that you're saying and you're not strong in your own convictions because you don't actually believe what you're saying. You're just saying it to try to make a buck, which is obviously what is going on here. And you're obviously trying to sell something else. You have ulterior motives, but you don't truly understand what you're saying and why you believe it. You start to say things like this and you start to contradict yourself and you start to lose sight of, okay, well, what's the truth here? Like you're not even making any sense because you can't keep track of the truth because you don't know what the truth is. You don't even know how you feel. But I'm grateful that I'm able to do this because my child's <sighs> future and his education, both of them, they, they ma it matters to me, okay? With that being said, the way that I'm able to do this is because I, five years ago, I started working for my phone. I didn't know what the f I was doing, okay? A lot of you guys on here are like, oh, you have followers, that's why you're successful. No, I didn't have this app at all. I started from zero, just like everybody else does, okay? I didn't know what I was doing I just knew that I had something that I loved that made me feel good and then I started sharing it with people and then I started realizing oh sh like because I'm passionate about this because I love this so much other people want to try this too and so then I started selling it and then I started making a lot of money and so if that's something that you want to do like if you're looking to be your best self become healthier become like the person that you really dream about being, I can help you do that. If you want to make money by doing so, I can help you do that. You just have to take the chance and be coachable and be willing. Drop a dollar sign in the comments below. It scares me that someone who's fallen for a pyramid scheme would be in charge of their kid's education. It really does. It scares me for the kids. It says, I'm not chasing the money. If this is your dream, double tap and follow me. I'm chasing freedom. Freedom to hop on my golf cart on a random Tuesday to treat my kids to their favorite snacks. Freedom to raise my kids without the government. Freedom to live the life of my dreams without having to worry about how the bill are being paid. <laughs> it's so stupid. Let's go over my seven-year-old school lunch menu, shall we? Today on the menu was walking tacos, Fiestata pizza, nacho cheese Doritos, Cool Ranch Doritos, cold, golden corn nibblers, seasoned black beans, salsa, fresh canned fruit. Um, the nacho cheese Doritos, the Cool Ranch Doritos, both of those have red and blue and probably yellow dyes in them, which is, are linked to behavioral issues in children. So here's another way that she's trying to promote the pyramid scheme. She's trying to demonize the things that kids are eating and foods and things like that. And I have no problem with kids obviously like eating healthier food. Like I definitely agree with that. I mean, you're fine if you eat Doritos though. Like we've we've all been eating those since the beginning of time. Did you ever think that your kid misbehaving has more to do with your parenting than it does with Doritos? Cool Ranch Doritos? <laughs> like, But this is her way of trying to, once again, like attack the public school system it is to try to attack like food and lifestyle and like make you want to take your kids out of school because you know, she's trying to connect with you on something. I don't know who else feels this way, um, but what the f I feel like I'm quite literally fighting the system. I'm fighting society to to get my kid to eat healthy food. Now at home, we don't buy cereal. We don't buy f chips. We don't buy any of that bullshit. My kids eat meat, fruits, veggies, sometimes rice, potatoes, things like that. Things that I make sourdough bread at home. However, when I have my kid going to school and all of this other sh that's in front of his face that of course tastes better to him, he doesn't want to eat my home cooked meals. At one point in time, he did. If you look at this fucking menu and you think that it's healthy, there's seriously something wrong. And then you wonder why your kid can't sit down and learn anything. Their brains are on fire. So not only is she in a pyramid scheme, not only is she extremely disrespectful to school systems, she's selfish, she's rude, narcissistic, but there's also this, which I came across in my findings. I feel so good walking out of the nail salon loving what I just got done. I mean, look at them. They're so beautiful. It's not my favorite color, but it looks nice. Hey, Kelsey, did you know that you could give a review about services that were rendered to you that you really like and appreciate without being racist? That is, of course, unless you're just using the glowing review as an excuse to be racist. Chicken or the egg? I don't know. Because from where I stand, this review just looks like an excuse for you to just kind of, you know, vent your racism. A pamper to feel relaxed. And I'm sorry, but some of these Chinese women just don't get it. You know? And I almost, almost gave you the benefit of the doubt. But the preemptive block is usually a dead giveaway that somebody does not want me talking about them. But I was still able to see your comment section because obviously I have more than one account. You liking comments that say, this is why I don't go to the Asians. Well, in my town anyway. The Asians? Like Jesus Christ, I- This is, by the way, from the end of 2022. So not even two years ago. Diana, and this is exactly why I refuse to go to those nail salon places. I go to a private lady who does them at home. 
Also liked by you, Kelsey. And then after you got called out, you tried to do a little damage control, which only made everything so much worse. After that comment sat for 19 hours, you then said, I don't generalize Asians because some are good. Ugh. And your response to the people who are calling you out for generalizing all Asian people is to say, it's because we all look alike. Are you serious? Are you for real? I stand corrected if they aren't because some Asians look alike. I said some. They aren't Chinese, they said. Some Asians look alike, if you know what I mean. I stand corrected. They kind of look alike. A like. But yeah, just some, not all of them for sure. There are so many shorter and more expeditious ways for you to just say you don't like Asian people. And that's okay, Kelsey, because we don't like you either. Well, there's more. And I'm sorry, but some of these Chinese women just don't get it. They're more worried about checking people off the list than actually putting in the quality time. Aside from the part that your nail technician probably wasn't even Chinese, I just find it really interesting that you're all of a sudden concerned about the quality time spent with another human being because isn't this you? I should work with somebody else, but it will not work with me. I am a really good person. Are you a good person though? Did you pray for your friend who you set up to rob and left for dead after your friend shot him? Or did we just forget that you got charged with criminal conspiracy, armed robbery, and attempted murder? Listen, I don't want to speak on behalf of the entire <laughs> internet, but I feel comfortable saying that pretty much everybody would feel more comfortable with that nail technician and how they're treated by them than spending any amount of time with you. Yes, that's right, folks. Not only is she extremely rude, disrespectful, selfish, narcissistic, also in a pyramid scheme, which is a business model which is built on the hard work of other people losing money in order for you to make money, right? Built on the backs of those people. Now, not only that, wait, hold on a minute, there's more. Not only is she openly racist, but she's also a felon, a criminal who set her friend up to be robbed and almost killed. Number one, I was 16 years old and I am now 27. Long time. I moved out, got kicked out of my mom's house whenever I was 16 years old, moved in with boyfriends. Just, it was wrapped up with a lot of with a lot of wrong people at the wrong time at the wrong place. Sure. I was literally living with crackheads that I thought were my friends and my boyfriend. I was the only one who actually had a job. We were all money hungry. Were. One day, went to work. I get home and they tell me this elaborate plan of how they want to rob this guy that we knew. Pretty sure I was the prettiest one out of the bunch, so they wanted to use me as the bait. Now, a little bit of backstory about me is I used to be very gullible, very like I just somebody who used to be gullible joining a pyramid scheme. Is the Pope Catholic? This one to be liked. I never wanted to speak up. I was very timid, very shy, but I knew I didn't want to do that. They somehow talked me into it, used my Facebook to message this guy and set him up. Does anyone believe that she was not in charge of her Facebook and that they tricked her into it and they used her Facebook, it wasn't her messaging? Now this guy, we knew him and he was not only using drugs, so he was a drug addict, he was selling drugs and like hardcore drugs to probably kids. Not that two wrongs make a right, but he wasn't a good guy. So the plan was made for me to drive the car to go pick him up. We were texting back and forth for a couple of days and seemingly going on a date. But I actually wasn't the one texting him. My boyfriend was using my phone, my Facebook, all of that. I get home from work one day and they're like, okay, we're gonna go do it. I was nervous as shit. I told my boyfriend multiple times I did not wanna do it. He didn't give a shit. There's three other people in this scenario that were- But you did it. Were wanting to do this and I, like I said, was very shy, very timid, didn't want to be the one to say, I'm not doing this. I didn't have a voice then. Also, I was the only one who had a car. So whatever, we all get in the car and we go. We drive to where this guy lives. I drive around the corner and I dropped him off. I'm nervous as shit at this point. I then drive to the guy's house to pick him up for our date. My boyfriend was actually in the trunk. My boyfriend at the time. So I have the guy in the car. I drive back around to where my friends were. As I'm driving, this guy's like, I have a gun. If you're setting me up, I feel like it's kind of fishy. If, you set, if you're setting me up, I am not afraid to shoot nobody. Meanwhile, I'm on my phone trying to text in secret saying that he has a gun. I was terrified. I think he saw me trying to text them and automatically knew something was up. About the same time we pull up to where my friends were, they open the door and like force him to get out. 
Somebody hits him in the mouth with the end of a gun or something. Meanwhile, this whole time I'm in the driver's seat. Just want you guys to remember, I'm in the driver's seat. I have done nothing. I have not touched any weapon. I have not done anything. Girl, at what point do you take ownership for what you've done? <laughs> you were in jail. As soon as someone hits him in the mouth, I don't know which one it was, all three of them were outside of the car. I was the only one inside of the car. He runs around the car and runs away. One of my friends was the one that shot the gun and a ricochet of a bullet came off the concrete and skimmed his leg. He literally had to wear a band-aid. Like for part two. Okay, part two to while is facing 90 years in prison. Go find the other parts. I'm posting them all at the same time. So after he gets grazed with a ricochet of a bullet, we all get in the car and start driving. At this point, we're like, holy sh**, what did we just do? Or I'm like, holy sh**, why did I just follow these idiots? You can't take responsibility. Like, people like this are scary with personalities like this. They are always the victim. They cannot be in any way wrong. Someone or him or whoever called the police, obviously. And the thing is, it was actually right by a school, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't even make it up. You can't even make this up. So now she wants to do homeschooling and stuff. It's like, are you even allowed near a school? No wonder you want to do homeschooling. I spent, I think, 25 days in county jail, at which point I was able to get out and be on house arrest. And then I had probation for like four years. 90 years was the maximum amount of time that all of my charges carried together. My charges were armed robbery, conspiracy to commit armed robbery, and attempted murder. If that did not happen, who knows where I would be in life. I am now top three in my entire company. I am very financially stable. I mean, I make a lot of money. You probably ended up in a pyramid scheme because no one else would hire you. Would anyone want to do business with someone like this? Not me. I have a beautiful family with the love of my life. Paid for a 2020 Cadillac sitting in my front yard. A Not the freaking Cadillac, please. Enough. Like, <laughs> beautiful home. I mean, I've went through drugs and alcohol and all of that. And my life is amazing now. So when I'm telling you constantly to go follow me on Facebook or Instagram, it's not because I need clout or I need followers. It's because I simply know how to help people who are stuck in a rut or are a felon or are housekeeping and don't know how to get out of it. And I'm only sharing my story to help other people. To oh, so that's the only reason she's sharing is that, okay. Did you know, like, I don't care who you are or where you come from. If you have enough persistence, you can do anything you put your mind to. I am a verified six-figure earner, and that did not just happen overnight. Always be true to who you are and be open and honest about where you came from so that people like they do on this app can't come for your character. You have horrible character. You have done nothing that would prove that you have good character. Nothing. I've not seen one thing. I, in fact, I've actually seen the other stuff. Well, people, she finally apologized, okay? So she's backtracking. This is what she had to say a little bit later. I want an apology to all of the teachers because my last two videos simply were not correct. I realized after reading through all of my comments, it's not the teachers. It's not the teacher's fault. It's not the teachers that I'm even mad at or my son's teacher. I genuinely think that I am just upset with the system. Remember when you said that all teachers are financially motivated to control your kid and they don't know what they're doing and they're trying to target your kid? Yeah, I don't forget that. I do not like public school. I just believe that it is ruining our children. And now we have different beliefs, especially if you are. How is it ruining the kids though? Okay, if you don't believe it's the teachers, then how is it ruining the kids? Because who's in charge of your kids when they're there? It doesn't make any sense. Are you a teacher? You have the belief that the system is great. That, and I know some of you are like, well, the system's not great. Not everything is perfect. We all can agree on that, right? The system is not perfect. And I understand that the teachers are doing the best that they can. And they're doing what they think is right. And I know that there's so many great teachers out there who care for their, their children. I get it. I will say that not all teachers are good. And some people said not all parents are good. And I respect that. And I believe it. The system is designed to control and to create workers. And I have no interest in creating a worker out of my child. I have interest in creating a thinker, somebody who can figure problems out, somebody who is happy in their life and that can make a living off of doing what he or she loves to do. Oh, you mean selling pyramid scheme products? Yeah, you're not gonna learn that in school, I can tell you that much. No wonder you don't like teachers because teachers are educated and teachers don't like pyramid schemes. And they teach their students to avoid them. 
Oh, yes, it all makes sense now, doesn't it? I don't want my child to just be average or part of the norm. I don't care to have them necessarily always follow the rules, and that might sound crazy to some of you. Yeah, but I want my child to think out of the box. I just want them to be happy, and I want them to be who they are. And sadly, most humans, most Americans, don't know who they are because they were never given the opportunity to explore that. They were forced into this box, go to school, go to college, get a good job. Here's the things that you can pick from. We're never told you can go do what you want. You can do whatever. This, the, the world is your oyster, and it is. The world is your what? <laughs> and a lot of people don't believe that. You gotta get a good paying job, become a nurse or a lawyer or whatever. Mm-mm. There's so many other things that you can do in life and be happy and make lots of money doing it. It all comes back to the pyramid scheme. With these people, Everything in their life, everything that they do, all of their actions are guided by the pyramid scheme. That is why they call them a cult. That's why people are so disturbed by them. That is why people feel like physically rocked when they finally get out of it because it is a true cult experience. It has a hold over every facet of these people's lives. It's an ego death to leave this and realize all of the that you were doing in order to sell these products and to stay in it and to get to the top of the company it is hard to look at yourself in the mirror at the end of that yeah it is so people like this will tell themselves anything that they need to tell themselves in order to keep going what i'm doing on this platform is just sharing my journey going through the unschooling process because i don't believe public school is the best route for my child now a lot of you guys came for me in the comments of how are you going to have time to unschool if you don't have time to sign a paper you know i'm human and i used the wrong words in that video i will tell you um i have plenty of time to spend time with my child to take him to do things and live my life but for me to sign the paper it wasn't even that I don't have time it was that it was insignificant and it wasn't benefiting my child at all and that is my belief I understand that that video came off really harsh and hateful to teachers and I realized last night after reading all these comments I'm not upset with the teachers I just don't like public school I don't like the system and the teachers were taught they were taught to follow the system they were taught to set the rules and to teach the kids lessons and and I get it so she's not really apologizing Okay, because she just said, well, I'm not actually mad at the teachers. I hate the system, but oh, the teachers are part of the system. <laughs> no, there's not an apology anywhere in here. This whole statement she's making, like no one's falling for this, right? And I know most of you are angry because you love your job, you love the kids, you are a good teacher. And thank you for being that way because there's some really bad teachers. I'm going to still unschool my child and I still believe that he is going to thrive in that environment over being in public school. And to all of you grown people in my comments just viewing pure hate um how does it feel to be miserable you know weird so that's my goal with my platform is to simply bring awareness to the fact that we as mothers are capable of leading our child to the best life possible by simply living with them and teaching them real life skills as we go through life together. I literally know zero teachers who think the system is perfect but many of the flaws are from parents not home training Exactly. 100% exactly. This was the best unapologetic apology. Clapping emoji. So true. Was this an actual apology? Nope. Just more excuses. The backpedaling is wild. I think I owe an apology to all of the teachers because my last two videos simply were not correct. I'm just going to say this. Teacher in America, I saw your first video that you're not apologizing for. Just want to let you know one. The students in our classroom that we are afforded many opportunities to exercise our classroom management on are typically the children of parents who are actively and purposely disrespectful to teachers as a whole. They learn that attitude from somewhere, and it's not from us at school. You can be frustrated with things that are going on in your child's school, but you purposely and willingly made a video complaining about teachers and berating all of us to almost a million people on this app. And in case you didn't know this, we already have massive teacher shortages, and it's only going to be getting worse and worse. So I. You say you're going to do unschooling, but maybe in a few years we won't have enough teachers for school, so that was a choice you made posting that video. I wanted to give a teacher the final say on that one because I'm glad that, you know, people can see that for what it was. Obviously, that was not an apology. That was not her taking back anything that she said, even though she probably should take it all back. Um, she's not. Don't worry, she's not. Yeah, what a horrible, awful person. You know, I think at the end of this, this is what I have to say, okay? I'm gonna make this all about MLMs. I truly believe that that is the motivational force behind all of this. Like, teachers got caught in the fray of it. Nail techs got caught in the fray of all of this. Energy drink companies, Doritos. There's been a lot of innocent bystanders, let's just say. And it's all because she is motivated to tear all these people down because they do not agree or align with her beliefs 
as a pyramid scheme participant. I think that that's the most important thing to, to realize here is that like, this is the kind of person that is at the top of this company. Okay. This is the kind of person that is third overall in this company is someone who is racist, someone who is a former felon, <laughs> like who doesn't, by the way, see any thing that she did wrong, still will not take accountability for that years and years later. Someone who is nasty, who basically says all teachers are bad and they're part of a system. And they're trying to control our kids and they're financially motivated and X, Y, Z. It's like all of these horrible things are happening because of this person. It's disgusting. And that is who is part of these things. That is who is selling these products. Don't fall for it. I think any rhetoric trying to demonize public school in today's day and age and trying to demonize teachers is just absolutely disgusting. And it has no place in our world. Teachers are doing the best that they can. They have very limited resources. They have the worst kids ever because of the parents. And I think the parents that have these children should take accountability. And the problem is, is that they never do. And they'll blame anybody but themselves. And that's the world we live in. Anyway, what's the final verdict, guys? What do we think about this person, good or bad? right? Do you agree that this is one of the worst people you've seen on the internet? Yes or no? Beyond that, I, I just want you guys to be aware of when someone is selling you multi-level marketing products, especially over on TikTok, because it's very vague. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for any of this stuff, please, for the love of God, for the love of God, okay? But yeah, that's pretty much all I have for today. So long video, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Don't forget to please subscribe. If you are not already, I do tons of videos just like this one. I have a ton more coming. If you did like it, leave a like, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Day two of unschooling, and we're at the park learning how to have fun. But before you get your panties on a wad, listen. Yes, we're gonna be doing reading and writing and math and maybe science, but it's not gonna look the same as traditional public school. It's gonna be different. There's so many comments in my comment section about, well, what if they wanna be a doctor or a lawyer? And I think I've already mentioned this before one time already, but like the likelihood of my kids wanting to do something that they don't see that I'm normalizing is very slim. On top of I'm very proactive inside of my profession and my career of being an entrepreneur, they're likely gonna follow that path because they're gonna see how successful. I'm also gonna teach them the right way and most of these people are miserable most of them I don't know that I've seen a doctor or a lawyer that's like so happy 